Adventures of the Thin Man, rebroadcast for men and women in the armed forces of the United Nations. The Adventures of the Thin Man, starring Claudia Morgan and David Gothard. It's early evening, and we find Nick Charles at home alone, anxiously waiting the return of Nora. The late editions of the evening newspapers are spread all over the floor, and there's a worried expression on our hero's face. Suddenly, the phone rings. That may be Nora, John Trebin. I hope. H- hello. Oh, hello, Ed. Did you see the New York papers? You got the whole story. How Tootsie Torrens was found dead in my apartment, how we got Shirley Booth to help us, everything. Ed, what'll I do? Nora's going to be boiling. Sure, I made plans for a reception. I hit all the breakable lamps and bases. Oh, uh, uh, wait a minute. I think that's Nora now. Goodbye, Ed. <laughs> oh, Nora, darling. How oh, am I glad to see you. Welcome home. Hello, Mr. Rat. Oh, so you've seen the evening papers. Uh, sweetheart, I can explain everything. Really? Just how the corpse of one of your old girlfriends get here? And why did you find it necessary to get a beautiful Broadway actress to help you solve the case? Uh, <laughs> you must mean Shirley Booth. Well, she just... It's ha- a lie, every word of it. But you didn't even hear my explanation. I can tell when you're lying without even listening to you. Where are the lamps? I hid them. Now, Where are the vases and the dishes? The same place the lamps are. Oh, lying isn't enough. Now you're trying to... You're frustrating. Wait till my luggage comes up. Oh, that must be Gilbert with my bag. Gilbert? Uh-huh. He slept in the upper berth. Open the door, dear. Hello, Laura. Gilbert, dear. I'd like you to meet Nick, my slouch. Slouch? It's a new word I just invented. It means a husband who's a low grade of parasitic insect. <laughs> How do you do, Nick? As well as any slouch can. Nora, what'll I do with these bags? Would you be a darling and put them in the bedroom, please? He's rather good looking. Good looking? Gilbert, sensational. He's a Sinatra with health, a boyer with hair, and a gable with small ears. And what's more, dear, he's so. Mm -hmm. I've invited him to stay with us for a while. Nora, are you doing this to get even over that Shirley Booth business? My Nicky, darling, you know I'm not the spiteful type. No, of course not, dear. But you do have a wee bit of jealousy in your nature. Jealous? Me? Was Shirley Booth very pretty and very, very clever? Mm Mm-hmm. Very heavy. Mm. Wonder what's keeping Gilbert. Gilbert! Oh, Gilly boy. Gilly boy. Hey, just what's been going on between you two? Gilly! I think any self-respecting man would answer to a name like Gilly. You don't understand, dear. Gilly was in trouble. Someone was out to murder him. And, and, oh, I'm going in. <gasps> Nicky, look. On the bed. Oh, I'm afraid that was a very short-lived romance here. Dead? Uh-huh. On my bed, too. What killed him? The way his eyeballs look, I'd say it was poison. Oh, my God. Are you sure you didn't have a good reason to get rid of Me? You can tell me. I won't say. I didn't kill him, Nicky. Honest, I just brought him here to make you jealous. There's a mark on the back of his neck. A little puncture that's still red. Vampire? No, oh, dear. Vampires make holes in the throat. How'd you do it, dear? I didn't. Someone was trying to murder him. Yeah? Why? To get the capri. He had it on him. It was in his breast pocket. I saw him put it there. Mm-hmm. We'll take a look. There's nothing here but his wallet. There's nothing in his other pockets but some chains and odds and ends. Well, look in the wallet. There's a card here. Hugo Starnes, Rare Jewelry, Hotel Dale. Some money, that's about all. Hugo Starnes is the man who was going to buy the necklace. Gilly told him about these attempts to murder him. I wonder if Starnes knows something. Darling, your attempt to cover up your crime is very clumsy. You still think that I... Nicky, I'm telling you the truth. You've got to believe me. Well, dear, if you'll believe my explanation of the Tootsie Collins Shirley Booth case, I'll believe this wild yarn about guilt. Well, no. Nothing could convince me you're telling the truth. But you didn't even hear what I have to say. You think I'm going to stand here and 
listen to a pack of lies. Okay, baby. Why did you murder her? I didn't. And what's more, I'm going to prove it. And what's more, if you if you can solve a case without me, I can do the same thing. <laughs> Come in. Uh, Mr. Um, Hugo Starn? Yes. Well, I'm Nora Chow. Oh, yes. The young woman who phoned a few minutes ago. So Gilbert Rogers was murdered in your apartment? Yes, Mr. Starn. Oh, great pity. A fine man. Did you kill him? No. I thought you might know who did. Oh, you're a charming little liar. Where's the necklace? I don't know. I'll pay a reasonable price for the necklace. No questions asked. You're very beautiful. Oh, thank you. Here, let go of me. I adore beautiful objects, oh. Mrs. Charles. I find it difficult to keep my hands off them. I'm especially fond of the necks of beautiful women. Stop it, you're joking. Where's that necklace? I told you I don't know. Have you ever been murdered? Not for two weeks. Why? It's a thrill that comes only once in a lifetime. How do you feel about floors? I don't. I walk on them. You should learn to bounce on them. Oh. It should be easy with your figure. Try it. No. <laughs> Pick it. I hear you call for me, boss. Yes, Pixie. I'm going to give you one half hour to work on that lovely young woman on the floor. Make her tell you where the necklace is. If she refuses, put a bullet into her brain. Clear? Yes, boss. Uh, ain't you gonna stay and watch? Oh, dear me, no. The sounds a beautiful woman in agony makes are so unmusical. You know what delicate ears I have. Be gentle, Pixie. Break her legs first. Get up. Well, aren't you going to help me up? Well, okay. I'll give you a hand. Here. Ooh, my hand. Stop biting. Oh, oh. Is that nice? Oh. Biting the hand that's picking you up? I thought I'd bite the gun out of it. <sighs> what are you going to do now? Break my leg? No. I'm just going to kill you. No torture? Why should I get myself all tired out? Oh. Close your eyes. I'm going to shoot you. Now. Couldn't you wait till Friday? No. No, I'd rather do it today. Well, aren't you even going to try and find out where the necklace is? No. You'll just tell me a lot of lies, and I want to get this over with. Come on, now. Close your pretty eyes. Your boss said to torture me first. Oh, he's a big smarty, too. I want to kill you first. Now. Look at my leg. Uh, so, I'm looking. So, don't you want to break him? You can't distract me. Can't I? Don't you dare throw that lamp at me. You won't get me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we'll be back with Nick and Nora Charles in just a few moments. But it's intermission time now. And that brings us to the piano and orchestra of Carmen Caballero in a medley of the hit songs from Showboat.
why do I love you? Signed one of his men to murder me. And you're still alive? Uh huh. I threw a lamp at his boy and the guy died. Starnes is going to come back in about half an hour. What'll I do? Get out of there and come back in 40 minutes. I'm going up there. All right. Uh, do you know where it is? Yeah, I've got Starnes' car right here. Did you get the consul's gun? Mm hmm. I've got the gun in my hand. Well, hold on to it. Fight it. Goodbye. Well, I guess. Don't move. Oh! Don't turn around. I'll put a bullet in your back. Mr. Yes. Lucky, I decided to come back, Mrs. Charles. What are you going to do? Drop your gun. Drop it, I'll shoot. All right, all right. Thank you. Don't, don't kill me again, Mr. Charles. No. This time I would just kill you a little bit. No, no, don't. Oh! oh. <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. McCall? Yes? May I see you for a minute? I'm afraid not. I was just leaving. I'm in a hurry Don't and I... Don't see me. Oh. Does that thing shoot real bullets? What do you think? You better put that away. One of us may get killed. Where's Gilbert Rogers? Well, he's gone. Did he leave you the Caprini necklace? No. Do you know where it is? No. I don't believe you. What happened to Gilbert? He was killed. Are you kidding? No, the body's in the bedroom. Open the door. Let me see. There. Are you sure he's dead? If you don't believe me, ask him. He's been poisoned. Did he suffer any agony before he died? He must have. You can see how he ripped his collar open. That's good. Who are you? I'm his wife. Such touching devotion. He was a rat. Did you kill him? No. Do I look like the murderous type? Yes. Where's the necklace? I told you I don't know. You're a liar. How can you tell? We hardly know each other. Oh, don't do that. You'll wake him up. Maybe that'll help you to remember. Where is it? In my wife's powder box. I'll get it. Okay, here. You want to see it? Yes. Oh, my eyes! <laughs> And I've got the gun now. Get up, Mrs. Rogers. You got me all full of powder and it isn't my shade. What's the idea? I want that necklace. It belongs to me. You know who killed him? Yes. Who? The necklace. That isn't funny. There's a curse on that necklace. Whoever has it dies. What do you want it then? Do you think you'll look cute in a halo? I want to sell it. Originally, it belonged to me. He stole it when we separated. What are you going to do with it? Hold on to you until I find out if you killed him. Suppose you let me go now. You can hold on to me later. Are you kidding? Think I'm kidding? No. Come on, we're going places. This is so sudden. Where are we going? To a hotel room to meet my wife. You louse! Corrections, louse. What's that? A married louse. Let's go. Where did I get a second head from? You've only got one head, madam. But you'd better keep it on your shoulders if you know what's good for you. Hmm? Well, who are you? Joe Larkin's the name. Will you please take that gun out of my nose? Sure, if you get up and don't try anything. Who are you? Nora Charles. Why? That's who I thought you were. Who's the corpse on the floor? A torpedo named Mr. Pixie, I believe. Did you kill him? Of course not. Where's Hugo Starr? I don't know. Where's the Caprini necklace? I've no idea. What were you doing on the floor? Resting. Starr cocked me on the head. I wonder. Don't you believe me? You're married to Nick Charles, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Any dame that's married to him has to be a good liar. How can I get in touch with Gilbert Rogers? It's very simple, Mr. Larkin. Take the gun, put it to your head, and pull the trigger. You mean Rogers is dead? Murdered. Who are you, anyway? Never mind. I still think you know where that necklace is, and I'm going to find out. Uh, are you going to kill me? Maybe. First, I want to see if you've got that necklace on you. Oh, really, Mr. Larkin? I couldn't hide anything that doesn't belong to me under this dress. You can see that for yourself. Yeah, you're right. Mm. Okay, what did you do with it? Nothing. Don't give me that. Please, be, be, be careful with that gun. Nicky. Don't reach for any gun, brother. I'll let you have it. Oh, no, you don't. Okay, don't. Get this way now. Nice work, Nora. What did you hit him with? The telephone. Well, you better pick it up, dear. I'll take his gun. No, no, please. Oh, excuse it, operator. I've made my connection. Goodbye. Nicky, who's the dame? Uh, Gilly's wife. Oh, uh, Mrs. Rogers, how do you do? I could do better. Who's he, dear? The live one or the dead one? The live one. Oh, well, he called himself Joe Larkin. The one on the floor is Mr. Pixie, a burned-out torpedo. Get up, Larkin. Uh, all right. Don't shoot. Uh, hello, Rita. Hello. What were you doing with her? Just trying to throw a scare into her. I thought she knew where the necklace was. You two seem to know each other. Joe's my dead husband's attorney. Nora, will you cover them with a gun and search Joe? I want to examine his body. All right, dear. Strip, Mr. Larkin. Uh, I got skinny legs. Now, never mind. Then I'll just go through your pockets. Shall I search Mrs. Rogers, too? No, she hasn't got anything. How do you know? Uh, what did you find in Larkin's pocket? A yo-yo. 
three salted peanuts. Oh, is that all you found? No, here's a telegram that reads, Dear Joe, still being trailed. Met Nora Charles, wife of famous detective on the train. She said she'd help me after I gave her the baloney about her look. Hmm. We'll see Hugo Starnes tonight and follow your advice, Gil Rogers. Very interesting. And so is this body. The shirt's been ripped open. There's a puncture in the back of the neck, just like Roger's had. Nora, darling, why didn't you leave here after you phoned me? Well, I couldn't. Starnes came back and knocked me out. Do you think Starnes is the killer? We'll find out soon enough. I'm pretty sure he's got the jewels. I'm going to have Starnes brought to our apartment. How? By mental telepathy? No, dear. When you left our apartment, I phoned the Continental Detective Agency and instructed them to have a man follow Starnes. They're also checking up on other angles of the case for me. Just phone the Continental and have their man pick up Starnes and deliver him to us. What's the meaning of this? Am I being kidnapped? Shut up and sit down or I'll plaster your ears back, Mr. Starnes. Whose apartment is this? Mr. Nick Charles lives here. And I... Oh, hello, Mr. Charles. Hello, Shadow. Oh, I see you picked up Starnes. Uh, come in, Mrs. Rogers, Mr. Larkin. Mr. Hugo Starnes. How nice to see you here. Uh, do you know these other people? I never saw them before in my life. Shadow, did you search him? Yeah. Here's his Roscoe. Thanks. Did you find any jewelry on him? No, sir. No jewelry. What did you do with the Caprini necklace, Mr. Starnes? My dear fellow, I haven't the slightest idea of what you're talking about. Listen, Starnes. Gilbert Rogers has been murdered. Your boy Pixie's been bumped off, too. We have reason to believe you're responsible for both those murders. Don't be silly, my good man. I dislike homicide. It's so illegal. But I do know who killed both those men. Who? It was your wife, Nora Charles. Oh, how did you find out, Hugo? You were the last person they both talked to. That accusation will stand in a court of law sooner than your accusation against me. She's the murderer. How'd I do it? I don't know. Poison, probably. Maybe you've got some on your fingernails. All you have to do is scratch some. Like this? No, no, don't. Stop it. Stop. <laughs> you better be careful how you treat me, Nicky. I've got the oh. evil eye. <laughs> oh, Nicky, it's, it's Hugo. He collapsed. No, oh, baby. He's dead. Are you kidding? Nope. Oh. Oh, I, I've really got the evil eye. Don't you look at me. Make her stop looking at me, Mr. Charles. She'll kill me, too. Take it easy, Mrs. Rogers. If Nora looks could kill, I'd be an aging ghost by this time. Here's what killed him. The necklace. The Caprini necklace. Yes, it was around his neck, under his shirt. There's a curse on that necklace. Whoever wore it died. Not a curse, Mrs. Rogers. It's a very tricky little clasp. There's a needle in the clasp controlled by a delayed action spring. The needle is hollow, filled with deadly poison. You see, Nora? Mm hmm. I suppose it was the kind of gift a man gives to his wife to sort of shut her up. Mm -hmm. The men of the Renaissance had a very efficient way of solving their domestic problems. Mrs. Rogers, did you know about this? No. This is the first time I heard about it. That's not so easy to believe. Well, I never wore the necklace. There was a curse on it. Then why were you so anxious to get it back? It belonged to me. I wanted to sell it. You can't accuse me of that murder. I didn't do it. What do you know about this, Mr. Larkin? Nothing more than what you know. The puncture on the neck of the three dead men indicates that they all met their end the same way. They wore the necklace. That looks like an accident to me, Mr. Charles. Perhaps that poison was in the class ever since Renaissance time. No, Mr. Larkin. I had the Continental Agency check the history of that necklace. It was worn and admired by many people for centuries. No one was ever found dead with a necklace around his or her neck until tonight. That indicates only two people who might have put the poison there. Are you accusing me? We aren't neglecting Mrs. Rogers. I didn't kill him. That's ridiculous. What motive would I have? I don't know. But I do know Mrs. Rogers had a motive. To put it mildly, her husband didn't appeal to her. Also, since the necklace was at one time in your possession, Mrs. Rogers, you had an opportunity of filling it with poison. Did I? And how did I get him to hang it around his neck? Maybe Mr. Larkin might. I don't. Besides, Rita wouldn't do a thing like that. Oh, no. Larkin... Just what did Rogers mean by the advice you mentioned in the telegram? I told him to get out of town for a few days to get away from these people who were trying to kill him. You have to do better than that, Larkin. He said he will follow your advice. That's in the future. Yeah. Well, I guess I'll tell you everything. He wanted to come back to his wife, and I told him not to. I told him she hated him. Might even kill him. You 
dirt, rotten liar. I'm not going to protect you any longer. But you told me you hated him enough to kill him. That was just an expression. You know that. I didn't know you were advising him. You told me you loved me. You wanted to marry me. He had a motive all right, Mr. Charles. My husband was insured for plenty. If he married me, he'd get that and he'd get the dough from the next... Wait a shut up. You don't know what you're saying. If I do, you can't pin this crime on me, you dirty two-timing rat. What's more, he's an amateur chemist. And he's got all kinds of poisons in his house. There's your killer. Ain't he? Watch out. He's grabbing the necklace. No, you don't. Let go. Oh. Did he get it? Did he poison himself? Oh, I... I socked him before he could touch it. Well, I guess that's a confession of guilt, all right. All right. Call headquarters and make a reservation. And now for the solution of tonight's Thin Man Adventure. Hello, darling. You're just in time for breakfast. Sorry I had to stay at headquarters all night, dear. A little time to wear lock him down. Did he confess that he put the poison in the class? And that he advised Rogers to wear the necklace round his neck? Yep. He told him to do that in order to keep the necklace hidden. Larkin got the idea of murdering Rogers when those attempts were made at his life. The police knew about them, and Larkin figured the cops would blame Hugo Starn. I guess the whole plan went cockeyed because Rogers met me on the train. Right. Pixie trailed Rogers here from the station, sneaked into our apartment, got into the bedroom, and saw Rogers there dead. He searched found the necklace around Roger's neck under his shirt. I guess he tried to double-cross Hugo by not giving him the jewels, and that's why Hugo tried to work on me. Right. He poor Pixie thought he was being very smart by hiding the jewels around his neck. He didn't know they were deadly. When Hugo came back while you were on the phone, he saw Pixie lying there. He must have noticed the jewels coming through the opening of Pixie's shirt front. So he caught me on the head and took the necklace. But why did he put it around his own neck? Not a bad place to hide a necklace, dear. I guess he got the idea from Pixie. He didn't know the jewels were deadly either. That's how I knew that neither he nor Pixie was the murderer. Brilliant. Radio service.